Okay, so I hope you made it through merging. Now we move on to a section all about one command called git diff. And honestly, most of this section is going to go under important, not critical. These commands that I'm gonna show you are useful, or the command I'm gonna show you uh, is useful, but it's not something that's gonna come up every single time you use git, like every moment you turn to git throughout the day uh, on the job, for example. It might come up once in a day, or maybe a couple times in a day, or maybe never in a day. So unlike things like adding and committing and git status and all of that stuff, which is like the bread and butter, you can't get around it, same with branching, the git diff command is just not as important. With that said, it is very useful. So the whole section is all about git diff, this command that works in different ways. It helps us make comparisons between different commits, different branches, between uh, different files, between uh, the staging area and the working directory and all these different areas and different things that we can compare in a repo. So it's one command. Uh, and the most important thing at the beginning is understanding how to read the outputs of the git diff command, which is probably the most complicated part of this section. So it's in yellow, but it's not too bad. I worked pretty hard on the slides. I think it turned out well, um, if I do say so myself. Then understanding the basics of using git diff, I'll say is critical. Everything else, mm, important, 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 but not critical. So hopefully that gives you a good picture of the section. Focus on the basics of git diff, what it does, how to read the output, that part is critical. And then there's like, I don't know what, five or six additional videos where I show different ways of using the command. They're important, but I wouldn't lose sleep over them. You don't need to study them or anything. Okay, so let's get started with git diff. In this video, I'll introduce the git diff command, and we'll also learn uh, how to read, how to make sense of its output, which can sometimes be a bit confusing when you're starting out. So the git diff command is all about showing changes in git. So in a given repository, there are many situations where we might wanna know uh, what changed between the last commit and our working directory what's changed between the staging area and the working directory, what's changed between two branches or two different files uh, over a certain number of commits, uh, what's changed between what we have locally versus what's on GitHub, all these different scenarios where we may want to learn about changes, about comparisons. So the git diff command does that. The git diff command is powerful, but also sometimes a bit overwhelming when you're starting out. Uh, it doesn't do anything to the repository, it doesn't impact anything, just like git status and git log, it's purely an informative command. So it's more about just taking a peek at changes and trying to understand how things have changed. Okay, so over here, I've got a pretty large git repository. Uh, I'll just show you, there's a bunch of commits, there's a decent number of files, so lots of commits here, lots of files, it's some HTML, some CSS, some JavaScript. Um, and currently I haven't changed anything since the last commit, right? On branch master up to date. Okay, so then let's say uh, I spend a, a couple of hours making some changes. Um, I'm, I'm gonna fast forward, but I'll show you an example. For whatever reason I decide, you know what? I want this color to be magenta and this other color should be, uh, let's go with cyan. I'm just gonna use uh, like labeled named colors so they're easier to identify instead of, you know, this. Uh, let's do coral there. Anyway, I'll make a bunch of changes. Uh, maybe I'll also change some HTML. So in this HTML page, I'm gonna change this H1 to say, hey there. And then down at the bottom, I'll make a paragraph and just says um, chickens. All right, and then I go to this JavaScript file, grid.js, and somewhere maybe in the middle, I'm going to print out a happy face. Okay, and then back in a CSS file, I changed some font size from 35 pixels to 65 pixels. And let's say I do a whole bunch more, but this is just enough for this demonstration. Uh, and I then realized, you know what, I should probably make a commit. Um, I don't remember exactly what I did in each of those files. So if I just go back and look at this file, it's not immediately clear what's changed. Unless I memorized or I exactly know what the file looked like, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly where things changed across these three files. So that's where git diff comes in. The first uh, usage of git diff, it's just git space diff without any additional options. And this will list all the changes in our working directory that are not staged for the next commit. 
So it compares the staging area and our working directory. So I'll show you an example. Currently, I have not staged anything for commits, right? If I type get status, we see that there are three modifications, three different files, none of them staged. And if I run this git diff command, we see this kind of crazy looking output. Uh, it's another one of these windows where I'm not actually in my terminal. I have to, well, I guess I am, but I have to escape this view by typing Q, just like with git log. Uh, so anyway, I see all of this and <laughs> it's a little bit crazy looking at first. I mean, we see some of the stuff that I changed. We see some red, some green, minus and pluses. But then what is this? These at signs, negative 25 comma seven, Minus, 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 plus, plus, plus. What's all this stuff go? I mean, it's just kind of crazy looking. Uh, but this is the output of git diff. So what I'm going to do in the next video is walk you through how to read this, how to make sense of what's going on here. What's this line doing? You know, what's the minus and the plus mean? Um, and all that stuff that's coming up. But this is just an introduction to the concept. You make a bunch of changes, then you want to try and understand more about what those changes were. And this is one use case for git diff. We just don't really know how to make sense of it yet. So that's the next video. Before we talk about the ways we can use git diff, the different variations, the options, let's discuss the output. So the output that we get from git diff, whatever the diff is that we're trying to generate, it always follows a very similar pattern. And it looks something like this. You can see over here on the right, it's kind of crazy looking. I mean, we see hopefully relatively clearly some of the code or changes in a file, but then there's a bunch of stuff before. We've got pluses, we also have minuses, uh, we have uh, weird looking symbols, these at ats. So let's walk through what exactly is going on. So for these diagrams, I'm using a, a very simple example of a repository where we have a file called rainbow.txt and I made a commit, it looked like this. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. That's how I learned the rainbow when I was a little kid. It was just blue and purple at the end. But then we make uh, some new changes. We haven't committed anything, but I made some changes in the working directory in the same file, and I updated it to be blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Biv. Okay, so clearly we can see it's a, a minor difference. We changed uh, the same file so that purple is gone. We deleted that and we added indigo and violet. So when I run the git diff command, and again, I'll, I'll walk through doing that and the different variations, but I'll get an output that looks something like this. So there's a lot of stuff going on, even just for that tiny little bit of a, a change. Hopefully you can see, right? We see purple in red with a minus sign, indigo and violet in green with a plus sign. But let's talk about what we actually see on this diff, on this output. So the first thing up top, uh, it's gonna say diff and then dash dash git but then it's going to have the files that are being compared. Usually these are actually going to be the same file, just two versions, the old version of Rainbow and the new version, right? The, the version from the last commit and the version in my working directory. But it could be different files. You would have to set that up yourself. Typically it's the same file just over time between commits, between branches, uh, between your staging area and your working directory. It's the same file typically. So git is going to call one A and the other one B. So you can see rainbow.txt, the first one here is going to be A, rainbow.txt, the second one will be B. So we may get uh, an output that's a lot more complicated, but there's always going to be uh, the first line, the files that are being compared to files. So helpers.scss compared to helpers.scss. And here's what changed in that file. And here's another file main.css, main.css. So if I just rerun the command that I had earlier, uh, we can see it's telling me here is the diff between index.html and index.html. And then I keep going down. Now we have a different file, grid.js and grid.js. If I keep going down, here's another file, main.css, main.css. Okay, so it's just telling us the two files. Usually they're the same file over time. Then the next line does not matter for the most part. Uh, I've never needed to, to ever take a look or understand it. Uh, it's metadata about the files that are being compared. Uh, each file actually gets its own hash. That's what we're seeing here, but really it doesn't matter. And then this is an internal file mode identifier. Again, not important. Then we see two lines of markers. This is Git's way of telling us that for file A, whatever that is, 
it's going to be indicated changes in file A will be indicated with a minus sign and file B will be a plus sign. So that part's hopefully straightforward. Um, then we get to chunks. Uh, so you might have a file that's 10,000 lines long. You changed one line. Git diff is not going to show you the entire 10,000 lines. It's going to show you uh, the change, that part that was changed, and then a little bit of context before and after. So we can see, you know, here's what was changed, and then there's some context before, and it's at the end of the file, so there's nothing after. Here, I change this line here, so we get a, con a little bit of context before, and then some after. And then here's another change. We got context before and after. So this file itself might have been a couple hundred lines, I think it is, but it's only showing us a small selection, a small chunk around each change. So each chunk starts with a chunk header, uh, which looks like, oh, here's just multiple chunks, by the way. This is one file, main.css. It has one chunk and then a second chunk, just two different areas in the file that were changed. So a chunk header is the header at the beginning of each chunk, uh, and you can identify them by the two at signs on either side, and then some weird looking numbers inside. All right, so there are two pairs of numbers. One set of these numbers corresponds to file A, the other file B. That's what the minus sign here indicates. So minus, minus as we see, is for file A, plus is for file B. Anyway, uh, what these numbers are telling us is how many lines have been extracted in this chunk. So how big is this chunk from file A and what part of the file do they start from? So it's kind of confusing. Uh, you often don't, I personally don't spend a lot of time looking at this. I'm usually looking at the changes, but just so you understand how to read it, uh, this first bit says from file A, because the minus sign, four lines have been extracted starting from line three. So this is not negative three, it's just three the minus indicates A. So four lines starting from line three. And so uh, the next part from file B, we have five lines starting from line three. So I'm gonna diagram that out here. This is what our files looked like. This is file A, this is file B. Old version from the last commit, new version, same file, but just what's changed. Well, the chunk uh, says from file A, we get four lines starting from line three. So one, two, three, this is line three. We get four lines, yellow, green, blue, purple. Then file B is going to include five lines starting from line three, one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, one thing that is kind of confusing is that it shows orange right here. This is line two of our file. Technically, this is uh, not really part of the chunk itself. It, depending on the, the language of your file, if it's Python or JavaScript or something else, uh, sometimes it will display a little preview of a line. Other times this is something else. It's not reliably a line from the chunk. It's confusing. So it starts here. Um, anyway, so what we have here are the two ranges, right? Those numbers, three comma four, three comma five. And then down below we have the actual changes. So this is the content of the file, two files superimposed, where we can see every line that starts with a minus. It was a change that came from file A. And every line that starts with a plus comes from file B. So these lines, yellow, green, blue, are unchanged, right? They exist in both. But then purple, which is actually red, but purple has that minus sign, came from file A, and it's not in file B. And then indigo and violet came from file B. They're not in file A. Usually Git picks A and B for us uh, in such a way that you can think of file A as like the old stuff and file B as the new stuff, but it doesn't always work out that way. So this tells us, as we already know, that yellow, green, and blue are in both files. Nothing changed there, right? Red, orange are both in there too. They're just not part of this chunk because it, it just picks a small little bit of context around a change, and the change happened right there. Purple turned to indigo and violet. So indigo and violet are new, purple gone. So here's a more complicated example. Uh, this is for a style sheet, main.css. We can see up top, same file, just compared A and B. Uh, then we see the chunk header, and then here's our chunk, some context, and we see that we ended up with four new lines in this chunk added as part of file B. And then here, the second chunk in the same file, it just skips down. We're starting at what, line 63 now instead of 22. There's a whole bunch of stuff in between that just doesn't show up. We see that file A 
had these lines in red that are gone, and file B has these, what, six lines that are new. So that's a basic concept for how these diffs, these outputs work. Uh, if we just go back here, I know it's kind of crazy to look at, but hopefully you can step through and, and understand what each line does. So this is telling us we're comparing two files, same name, just at different points in time. Uh, what those points in time are, we can set up ourselves. We'll learn how to do that in the next couple of videos. And then we see this stuff, the metadata, we really don't need to care about. Then we see each version, A and B, are both assigned a symbol. A gets minus, B gets plus. Then we have the chunk header. It tells us seven lines from line 25 are coming from file A, and seven lines starting at line 25 are coming from file B. Then what we see here are those seven lines from file A, right? One, two, three. This one came from A, so four, five, six, seven, and the seven lines from file B. One, two, three. Skip that one. Four, five, six, seven. And then, of course, the color coding is helpful, but this minus sign means it's a file A line that only exists in file A. This means it only exists in file B. Usually this means old versus new. And then we've got a second chunk in the same file where there's just a line that I added, chickens, that only exists in file B. Nothing was removed or changed in file A at this point. And then we've got other files, right? The same sort of idea applies to this different file or to this JavaScript file. Uh, there are different chunks excerpted, ex excerpted, ex excerpt, I don't know how you say that, different excerpts from uh, the files. All right, so in the next video, we'll talk about different ways that we can use git diff uh, to make different comparisons, where we will see very similar looking outputs that follow the same pattern. All right, so now we're gonna walk through some of the different ways of using git diff. Uh, we've got git diff, git diff head, git diff staged and cached. And then we have git diff head with a file name, git diff staged with a file name, branch names that we can use. We can put commit hashes in there. So there's a lot that we can cover. It all follows a very similar pattern though. So it's not super difficult, but I'm gonna begin by making a very basic repo that we can follow along with. Instead of this crazier one, right, with all these changes and tons of files, I'm gonna do just a trivial example. It all works the same way. So I'm not in a repo at the moment. I'll init a repo and I'm gonna make um, just a colors file, colors.txt. And why don't I add a commit right now? Git add colors.txt, git commit. We'll just do initial commit. I'm just gonna make some basic history. And then here's my file. So I'll add red into that file, and then I'll do a commit am, which just means add everything and then m for message. So I don't have to add and commit. I'm gonna just do this very quickly. I'll probably fast forward. So this one will be add orange. I'm just gonna build up the rainbow one commit at a time. Maybe I'll do yellow and green together. So this, let me clear, will be add yellow and green, and then blue and purple. So I'll do the same thing, right? Add a commit message, add blue and purple. Okay, so we've got our rainbow set up now and I have a tiny bit of history. I have what, five commits so far? Okay, that's enough for us to start using git diff. So the first version I showed you, the only version, is just git diff with nothing else. And this will show us all the changes in our working directory that are not staged for the next commit. So it compares staging and the working directory. Also, staging is usually referred to the index on the documentation. It's just confusing. Staging makes more sense. Uh, so a lot of people say that. Right now, if I run it, there's no difference because there are no changes at all. There's nothing in the staging area. There's nothing in the working directory. Nothing has changed. Uh, so if I instead do something simple like, um, well, what I did in the last video, if I remove purple, right, and replace it as indigo, let's just save that. If I type git status, we see, all right, there's something that's been modified. And now if I type git diff, we see an actual diff. So this is showing us a comparison between what the index knows about and what the staging area has uh, versus the changes that we've made. Another way of thinking about it is that the differences are what we could tell Git to add to the staging area. So as we see here uh, in our colors.txt file, 
right? We're comparing one file to the next. First version is A, second version is B. So A is what the staging area knows about versus B is the changes we have in our working directory. So A gets the minus sign, right? B gets the plus sign. So in the, the version of our files that the staging area last knew about, purple was still there, right? That's what that minus sign means versus with the uh, version of the file that is actually in our working directory, we see that indigo has been added. So that's what the plus indicates. It doesn't always mean something is new, it just means that it came from file B, and in our case, file B are the new changes. So that's all I'll show you in this video. Just to make this point one more time, git diff on its own will list the changes in our working directory that are not staged. The next version we'll look at is git diff head. So this will list all changes in our working directory since the last commit, since head, right? Remember head is this pointer, this reference to uh, the last commit, typically the last commit on a branch. So wherever head is, when we do git diff head, we'll see the changes that we've made since head. Uh, so that includes, if we try this again here, git diff head, that includes staged and unstaged changes. So right now, you know, we see the same exact output that we saw uh, when I just did regular git diff. This is showing all unstaged changes. This is showing everything that has changed since our last commit, since head. However, if I stage something, if I do git add, and then our file is called, what, colors.txt. If I do git diff again, now we don't see any changes, right? Nothing is showing up because this is supposed to show me the difference between my working directory and the staging area. And right now they're the same. But if I do git diff head, this is showing me the difference between the head and my working directory. So now we see the same thing we were seeing earlier. So now let's go ahead and commit. So git commit dash M, just add indigo. And then I'm gonna do something different now. Uh, I'm going to make, what should I do? I guess I'll make a new file. And this new file will be called, it doesn't really matter, but it will be numbers. All right, so touch numbers.txt. And in this numbers file, I'm just going to add the number one to begin with. So I'll just spell it out in all caps, one. Okay, so currently numbers is untracked. So if I try and do git diff, I'm not going to see anything there. However, if I add that new change, so git add numbers.txt, now if I do git diff head, we see that since our last commits, we have some new stuff, right? And it's just the fact that numbers.txt now exists and it has this line one inside of it. Uh, the way that we can tell that it, there was nothing there before, the version A is actually dev slash null, that's git's way of telling us nothing compared to now having the file numbers. Uh, so there was nothing really to compare it before, but that doesn't break it. We just end up seeing only the additions because there only are additions. Okay, so git diff head shows us that, but just one more time, git diff on its own is only showing us unstaged changes. Nothing has been, un or nothing is currently unstaged. But if I add violet, for example, to colors, and I do git diff, we only see a diff for colors because that's the only file that changed that has not been staged versus git diff head. If I just remind you here, numbers is staged, colors is not. So if I do git diff head, I see all changes staged, unstaged, it doesn't matter. Anything new in the working directory since head, right? And head, if you ever forget, and head currently is pointing to this commit here. So that's what we are comparing to. So git diff shows us all unstaged changes. Git diff head shows us all changes staged and unstaged since head. Another variation of git diff is to pass in this option dash dash staged or alternatively cached. They do the same thing, just an alias. Both of them will show us the staged changes, only the changes that are staged. So we've seen how to do all unstaged. We've seen how to do staged and unstaged. This both of these options are how you do only staged changes. Only show me the staged changes. What is the difference between my last commit and the staging area? So I'll show this to you now. Uh, if we take a look at git status, the same project, project is a stretch, but the same repository. 
changes to be committed numbers.txt. We added one into numbers. Then we have some changes for the colors file. We added violet, but that is not part of the staging area. So right now, if I do a, if I can type it, git diff dash dash, and then staged, we only see those changes from numbers because that's the only change. Uh, versus if I do git diff on its own, this is unstaged changes. So we see colors. And if I do git diff head, we see both, right? That's everything that has changed. It doesn't care if it's staged or not. Uh, and then if I add in colors, so if I do git add colors, now if I do git diff dash dash staged, we see both because both of those changes have been staged at this point. Also, we can use cached. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't like cached. I think just I call it the staging area. Staged makes more sense to me. But I do believe the docs actually reference cached first and then say staged is an alias of cached. It doesn't matter. All right, so quick quiz here. What will we see? Here's my git status. What will I see if I do git diff? Think about it. Okay, the answer is nothing. Well, I guess we see end, but <laughs> there's no changes to display because git diff is showing us unstaged changes. There are no unstaged changes. Everything has been staged at this point. Okay. Another thing we can do is narrow down the diff to a specific file or files. So instead of just everything, right, all unstaged changes or all staged changes or all changes since head, whatever we're actually looking at, we can narrow it down and say only in this one file. So currently, you know, we don't have a lot going on here that we would want to narrow down, but if I do git daf, git daf, git diff staged, as we saw in the last video, I'm getting two files. Uh, I'm looking at all changes that are currently staged, but I could say actually only show me the numbers file, how that has changed. And that's exactly what we see. So as an example, uh, let's say I have this really large project I've been working on. I showed uh, a couple videos ago where there's a lot of CSS and I made a lot of changes in this main.css and I want to see what those changes are since the last commit. So I can do git diff head, but there are other files I changed too, right? Index HTML, uh, main CSS, but also there's another file I changed, a JavaScript file. Here you can see that. And this is still not a whole lot of changes. Let's say it's been a couple of hours. I just want to see the changes since my last commit to my CSS file, main.css. So this is the path style slash main.css. I can narrow it down, git diff, and then style slash main.css. And specifically what I want is git diff head because I want to see all changes staged or unstaged since the last commit in that one file. And that's what we see. So these changes are specifically from this file. Uh, and we can see, right, since the last commit, uh, I added these lines, I added this line, and I added this line. Really, it's I modified, right? I edited a line, but Git doesn't show it that way. It says, this came from file A, it's gone in file B, and this came from file B, it's not in file A. All right, so that's how we can narrow it down to a particular file. I can also do multiple. For example, uh, there's also an index.html file. I just separate them by spaces. And now I have two files. I'm looking at the diff for the main.css and for index.html. So this also works if I wanted to see you know, the stage changes. I don't think I have any. Nope, they're all unstaged. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could do dash dash stage or dash dash cache and you know, other variations. I can narrow it down to a particular file or files. I can also use git diff to compare changes between two branches. So if I have two branches, currently I don't in the repo I was showing you, uh, but whatever branch one is and branch two are, git will do a diff between the files in those branches. So all the files in those branches, uh, although you can narrow it down as well. So let's do a quick demo of that. I need to make a branch. So why don't I commit the changes? I added what indigo and vi or I added violet and I added my numbers file. Let's just go with add violet and create numbers. And then I'll add a couple numbers here. One, two, three, four, get status. Let's do clear this, uh, get commit dash am, add more numbers. 
Alrighty, and now if I make a branch, so I'm gonna create a new branch, get switch dash C, we'll call this branch, how about odd numbers? So on this branch, I'm only going to have odd numbers. So I'm gonna delete two, and I'll delete four, I'll do a commit, so I'll add numbers, then I'll commit, removed two and four, Okay, and then let's also add five down at the bottom. So we'll do a git add numbers, git commit add five. Okay, so right now uh, we have two branches, nothing very exciting, but <laughs> we have master and odd numbers. And if I wanna do a comparison between the two of them, I wanna see what has changed from master to odd numbers or vice versa, the order does matter. But I list the two branches and I separate them by two dots or you can actually just add a space. Um, both of them will do the same thing. So let's do which, let's do from master to odd numbers first. So git diff master dot dot odd numbers. And the only file that changed was numbers. We still have the colors file on both branches, but there's no differences, so there's nothing to display. Now here we can see that numbers.txt version A which is from the master branch, because of that order that I wrote, master to odd numbers. This one is from the master branch, and this one is from my odd numbers branch. So we see that on the master branch, which is A, it has the minus sign in front of it. That's its designated symbol. We had one, two, three, four, and we did not have this stuff, right? Uh, then on B, we have the plus sign as its symbol. So we had one, three, and then five. So that's new on the odd numbers branch, and it does not include two and four. If I change the order, git diff odd numbers, and then master, now we see things have flipped. So A has been assigned the minus sign, but A this time is uh, the odd numbers branch, and B is master. So here, right on the master branch, B with a plus sign, we have one, two, three, four, and it's the opposite of what we saw previously. So that order does matter. Also, just to make this clear, we get the same outcome if we just use a space. But people like to use the dot dot. Maybe it makes it, I don't know, makes it clearer, you know, that you're doing that comparison. But you'll see both of them. Um, and then let me just quickly change one of these files. So let's do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I don't know, odd numbers will only display the odd numbered color. So if this is one, get rid of two, that's three, we get rid of four, five, and six. I don't know, I might have totally screwed that up, but whatever, we have fewer colors here. So now we type git status, let's make a commit here. So I'll add the colors file, and we'll just go with remove some colors. All right, so now if I do a git diff, let's go from master to odd numbers again. We have two files that are showing up. So the colors file changed from master to odd numbers, right? On master, which is A, we had orange, green, and indigo. They are not present on the odd numbers branch and we didn't add anything new. But on the numbers file, we have the same thing we saw earlier. We don't need to go over it again. So now we have multiple files because there were changes to multiple files between those branches. So that's how you compare branches with git diff, dot dot, or a space between two branch names. The last variation we'll take a look at is comparing two commits. If you wanna know what changed between two commits, not necessarily head, right? It could be any commit in the past. Uh, we can use the same syntax, git diff, and then some commit hash, dot, dot, some other commit hash. So uh, why don't we go back to master, git log, let's do one line. If I wanna know what changed between, uh, I don't know, add red, so that commit and uh, add blue and purple, sure. If I wanna know what changed there, I need to start by copying one of these commit hashes. It's kind of annoying uh, actually to keep track of both of them. So I'm just gonna paste it in this file. And then the second one I wanted was this commit hash. All right, let's see what happened there. So git diff and then the first one dot dot the second one. And we see the only file that changed was colors. That's the only file really, well, we did introduce the numbers file, but after 
uh, this commit. So it didn't even exist in either of these commits. But here you can see the changes, right? We added all this stuff into the file uh, between those two commits. Uh, and they're not necessarily consecutive commits. It's just all changes between those two commits. And this also works if I have a space, just like with two branches. Same diff. All right. So to recap those different versions, we can compare changes between two commits. The order matters just like it does with two branches. So all changes between all files for two different branches or two different commits. Uh, then we saw that we can do the same thing, but actually narrow it down to one file or two or three. We just call those files out afterwards. So that also works for branches and commits. And we saw that we can use the dash dash staged or cached option to only see the changes that are staged. To see unstaged changes only, we can use git diff, and then to see all changes since the last commit, so everything that's new in the working directory, staged or unstaged, git diff head. So the last thing I'll show you here is how to use git kraken or a similar GUI tool to visualize diffs, to actually see them in a file uh, instead of having to see them in your terminal. A lot of the time this is really useful, especially if you're working on large projects with tons of files. And this is one of the areas I think GUIs shine when you're working with Git. So here's Git Kraken. Uh, unfortunately, as I've said a couple times before, I can't make this any larger. So it lets me make it larger up until this point, which is still not very large. So I'll do my best to try and enhance and zoom in uh, in post-production. But here's my colors repository, very simple. Right, we have our initial commit. We added red, orange, yellow, green, add blue and purple, add indigo. Then uh, I created this odd numbers branch. Right, I removed two and four from the numbers. It's this project file here, numbers and colors. If I visually, if I want to see a diff, let's start by making some unstaged changes right now. Right, get status, nothing to commit, working tree clean. Uh, so why don't I add something to colors? Like I love the rainbow. We'll save that. And then in numbers, let's add five. This is on the master branch, six and seven like that. All right. So now I have two files that have been changed, both of which are unstaged. So now as it shows me here, two file changes in working directory, I can click to view those changes. So that's what it's showing me here, unstaged and staged. So I can click on either of these files and it visually shows me this new change, showing it to me in the file here. I love the rainbow was added. It shows it in green. So you can see there also, here's our little diff header. It's not showing the entire file, right? I can see, I can click to see file view or just diff view. And then same thing with numbers here. It's showing me that five, six, and seven are new. They've been added. Let's do something slightly different. Let's delete uh, for whatever reason. I don't know, we'll get rid of violet. Okay, so now go back to colors and it's showing me violet that has been removed. It's non-existent currently uh, versus I love the rainbow has been added. And again, it's just showing me the diff view. Uh, and then if I wanted to, you know, if I stage one of these files, let's stage colors, I can go here and see, okay, here's the changes I have staged. Here's the changes I've unstaged. So if I stage both files and I just want to see that diff, now I can, you know, just go between them. Nothing has changed in terms of what is, uh, what's different and what's not different. It's just, if I was doing this with git commands, I would do git diff versus git diff head versus git, da git diff staged. Here, it's just a matter of clicking if they're in the staged files area, then I'm viewing a diff for what is staged. If they are not staged here, I'm looking at the unstaged changes from numbers.txt. Uh, other things that we can do, if I get out of here quickly, uh, sometimes I do get lost. Here it is, you can X out. Um, if I wanna see changes between two commits, for example, I can click on one commit, like where we added indigo, and then hold down shift and select another commit like that. And then over here, it's showing me viewing diff between two commits. There's only one file that changed. And this is what changed, right? This is the difference between them. So I removed purple, I added indigo between those two commits. Or let's do a, a more drastic difference. 
from the very beginning? Or how about when we added red up to when we added indigo? Here's what changed. Or I could have multiple files involved. I'll open a different project. Okay, here's a much larger project, that 2048 app I was showing you, right, where we had uh, the more complicated diffs. If I wanted to visually see the difference between some commits, I could, I don't know, let's just pick two early commits. How about, sure, those two. I can see all of these files were changed, although it looks like 10 of them were renamed, but four files were modified. And then I can see the different chunks. I can see the chunk headers. So this is visually, for me, a lot easier. Uh, it's often a lot easier to work with if I really am trying to understand the difference between two commits or between two, two branches or something like that. Doing it from the command line, good to know how to do, and I still use that. But if I really need to dig down into the changes uh, and, and like spend some time working through what's different, then I really like the diff view from editors or from GUIs like Git Kraken. So if I wanna see the same thing that I'm seeing over here, when I just type git diff head, right? This is everything that's changed since the last commit. Very early in the section, I think the first or second video, I changed index HTML, I changed grid.js, and I changed main.css. So I can view that here. I click on my work in progress. So this is nothing uh, you know, committed yet. And then I can see the three files, one at a time. Here's what's changed in index. I can visualize it pretty easy. I can stage. I can see what changed in the grid.js file and in main.css. So I find this just better, easier to work with than this, personally. And the last thing I'll show you is if you want more context, you want the entire file. Right now we're in hunk. People call it hunk instead of chunk sometimes. <laughs> they mean the same thing. I'm viewing one chunk or one hunk at a time versus inline view shows me the entire file with uh, the diff right there. So I can find that one down there. It's not too bad, but some of the files are longer, right? So I've got to scroll quite a ways if I want to see everything versus if I go to hunk view, I just see the three hunks with some context around each change. So that's it. Nice part of Git Kraken and all these other GUIs, they pretty much all offer a view like this. It's pretty standard. Okay, so it's time to get some practice with Git diff. There are two very important announcements or notes about this exercise up front. First of all, uh, this exercise actually involves an existing repository that you're going to download. So stay tuned for those instructions in just a moment. And second, the other important note is that all these different variations that I'm asking you to use in these, uh, these different steps here, you may not remember them all off the top of your head. Uh, I wouldn't blame you if you don't. So don't feel like, you know, we've talked about adding and committing and branching. Those are like fundamental things you do day to day. Diffing, you may do frequently, but maybe not every flavor of git diff. So uh, I would say it's just not as crucial if you struggle to remember some of these, I, I wouldn't feel bad, but make sure you can get the answers. Make sure you understand, you know, what command does what, even if you can't recall it instantly. It's fine to look things up. Anyway, uh, like all the other exercises, there's a link in the resources for this video. I definitely recommend you open it up uh, because in order to get started with this project, with this exercise, it's not really a project, you're going to need to do something we have not yet seen. This is actually skipping ahead. We're going to learn about a git command uh, once we get to GitHub called git clone. So all that I'll say about it for now is that as part of the uh, setup for this exercise, you need to copy this link or copy this entire line. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then we're going to run this from our terminal and we're going to make sure we're not in a Git repository when we do this, because this is actually gonna make a copy of a Git repo that I've made. It's gonna make a copy for you on your machine. So let's try it. Uh, I'll do it right here. So I'm not in a Git repository right now. And I'm gonna run this command. I just copied it. Uh, I don't want those. When I copied it, I don't want the uh, little marks there. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit enter. And we get this output from Git. Again, we're, we're gonna learn about this command later, but I now have a new folder called git diff exercise. So now I'm gonna cd into that. That's the next step. Change into that directory. So cd into git diff exercise. And you'll see two files in here. So I can open this code dot, just open it in VS code. And here we go, we have two files, one for fleetwoodmac.txt, 
band Fleetwood Mac, uh, and then another one for Queen, the band Queen. Now, the way that this exercise works is that there are actually two branches. The current branch that you're on by default is called current. Now, I recognize it's kind of confusing. What I meant is that this is the branch for the current lineups, the modern 2021, 20, 2022 20, lineups of these bands. Uh, but there's a second branch that I've made already, and you can access it by uh, running this command, git switch 1970s. So I'll do that now. And it is kind of weird. You're not gonna see this branch, which is why I'm having you run this. If you run git branch, we don't see a second branch. We will learn why that is. So I'm not gonna go into that until we get to GitHub and remote branches. But anyway, just follow these steps blindly. It's okay, we will learn. Uh, so now I have two branches, okay? 1970s and current. I made both of those ahead of time for you. Now you have them on your machine if you followed these steps. So if we look at the 1970s branch, that's what I'm on right now, we have some slight changes. For example, the Queen file now has Freddie Mercury as its singer. Uh, Fleetwood Mac has a different lineup. No keyboardist back in 1970. Now this band Fleetwood Mac has had like a million lineup changes and it, this is not entirely faithful, but the point is that there's two versions of each file, two branches. Uh, each branch has the same two file names, but different contents. So now that we have that set up, we now have our diffs, the actual exercise portion. So there are a bunch of steps where I'm asking you to make different comparisons between the 1970s branch and the current branch for all files, between the 1970s branch and the current branch, but only for the queen.txt file, or switch over to this current branch, that's the name of it, and run a diff to compare the current head to the previous commit. Basically, there's a bunch of diffs I'm asking you to run. Every one will involve a flavor of git diff. Now, towards the end, I actually ask you to make some changes to a file. Follow these directions pretty carefully. Uh, for example, here I'm telling you to uh, replace Adam Lambert's name with your own name. Save the change, add to the staging area. So add that change, but do not commit. So that sort of thing is important because it enables us to you know, run different diffs where some changes are staged, some are not staged, and some are committed. Anyway. Follow these instructions if you'd like. I hope you do this exercise. Uh, we're gonna make some comparisons between the different band lineups over the years and stop watching at this point because I'm now just gonna go through it myself. So I did part one. I have this repository. I have these two branches, right? 1970s and current. Now the first exercise, the first uh, problem is to compare the difference between the 1970s branch and the current branch across all files. So I can do that with git diff, and then just two branch names. So I didn't specify which one you know you should compare first. Remember that the order matters, but I'll just say 1970s compared to now. Chronologically, that makes more sense because, well, let me just show you. We see, for example, you know what's changed. Like currently uh, in Fleetwood Mac, Lindsey Buckingham is no longer uh, part of the band sadly, and he's been replaced. So this format makes sense, in my opinion, where we have you know, the old is the actual chronologically older branch, and the new is the current branch, but it doesn't matter. So we also see you know, keyboard was set to none on the 1970s branch, there was no keyboard player, and now in the current branch, it's Christine McVie. And we also see the changes in the queen file. Now the second part of the exercise is to do the same thing, but only for the queen.txt file. So still compare the two branches, but I can narrow it down just like that as a third value. Just give me that one file. And here we are, what's changed? Well, Freddie Mercury exists in the 1970s branch. Adam Lambert is in the current branch. Mike Gross is in the 1970s branch and Neil Fair, Fairclough, I don't know. He's a, a, a new addition to the band actually. What's his name, Roger Deacon? I think was his name, was the real, uh, the main basis of the band, but he's actually not part of it anymore. So he kind of got lost between 1970s and 2021, um, but we don't have a middle branch. Anyway, next up, uh, step three, switch over to the current branch if you're not on it currently. So I'll do that. I'm on the 1970s branch, get switch to current. And then it says, run a diff to compare the current head to the previous commit, basically, if we do a git log, I wanna see what happened between where we are right now, this is head, and this commit. So there are multiple ways of doing this. I mean, I could copy these commit hashes, 
and do a diff between them. Or I could just say, what's the difference? So git diff between head and then the prior commit, the parent of head, head tilde one. And this is what changed in that commit. I changed uh, the basis, John Deacon. I think I said Roger Deacon, it's John Deacon. Anyway, uh, I updated him, he left the band and was replaced by this guy. So the way that I've written this right now is that we're looking at head compared to head tilde one. I would probably do it this way instead, like this, so that we can see what was added in the newest commit and what was removed, right? It's the same change. It's just the order was slightly different. Uh, but you could also get that commit hash, as I mentioned. So we could just copy part of that hash for the whole thing and do a git diff compared to that. So this is the same thing as this. And then here we're just flipping the order. So this is comparing head tilde one to head. And this is comparing head to head tilde one. So the new commit to the parent or the parent commit to the child. Okay, the next step. Uh, while on the current branch, change the queen.txt file by replacing Adam Lambert with your own name, save the change, add that file to the staging area, do not commit. Okay, so let's try that. I'm gonna change Adam Lambert and put my own name, Colt Steele, and I'm gonna save. And then I will just run get status. I will add that file, I'll stage it like the instructions say, but I'm not going to commit. Okay, now edit the Fleetwood Mac file, changing the lead singer from Stevie Nicks to Stevie Chicks. One of my chickens is Stevie Chicks. So we'll save that file, but we're not going to stage it. So Stevie Nicks becomes Stevie Chicks. And I saved it, but I'm not going to stage that. Okay, now we get to do some more diffs. Run a diff that reveals the unstaged changes in the working directory. So I should only see the change that we made to fleetwoodmac.txt. So what is the command I can do to view that? Well, it's gonna be git diff something. And if actually, it's just git diff. So git diff on its own is going to show me, in this case, the unstaged changes. Um, it's not gonna show me the changes that I already staged, right? To do that, that's the next little bit here. Run a diff that would reveal only the staged changes. So I should only see that change we made to queen.txt. I should see my name. So how do I do that? Well, it's gonna be another git diff, but we need dash dash staged or cached. And there we are. We see Colt Steele or whatever your name is uh, replacing Adam Lambert. And then finally, run a diff that prints all changes, both files that we changed, the stage file and the unstaged file since the prior commit. So we can do git diff head. So take current working directory, staged and unstaged changes, compare that to the head commit. So here's what changed in Fleetwood Mac and here's what changed in Queen. Okay, so I know this was kind of a tedious exercise, um, but I had to try and come up with something that you could follow along with and, and try and run some diffs on your own and get some practice with the different commands. Um, you know, I don't know how successful this was, but I, I hope you followed along and enjoyed it. Uh, don't get hung up on this bit around Git clone and how this all works. We will be spending a lot of time on that later on. Uh, this just enabled me to give you some starter code or files and branches so you could just get going with the diffs. All right, moving on.